Hey, Olympians. How are you? I sure have been missing you guys. On Tuesday, I offered a question up, and I would hope that some of you would answer it, but I didn't get an answer. We're going to talk about today, what is the difference between patience and long-suffering? What is patience? If I ask what was patience, I'm sure that some of you would be raising your hand. I can see Olivia saying, I know, I know, I know. Jubal, he'd raise his hand. And Lucas would raise his hand and bust out his answer before we called on him. But I want to talk to you today about patience. We need some patience amidst all this stuff that's going on, don't we? Patience is the ability to tolerate delays without getting angry or upset. Wow. Tolerating delays. How can I get patience? There's a verse in the Bible that says, if you want patience, you pray for patience, we'll give you troubles. And we say, oh, no, 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 Miss Sylvia, I don't want troubles. But there's another way to get patience. We're going to talk about that today. Make yourself wait. It's hard to wait, isn't it? One of the things I despise is having to wait. But make yourself wait. Stop doing things that aren't important. You know, we think we have to get this done, we have to get that done, we have to do this, we have to do that. No, you don't. Just stop. Think about things that make you impatient. I remember there used to be, like, to me, if I played a video game, I would end up very impatient and fussing and screaming and kicking and saying, Oh, no, they were doing this again. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. So I don't play video games because I don't want to put myself in that situation. So maybe you could think about things that make you act like that and just don't do them. And relax and take a deep breath. Let's all do it together. Don't you feel better? I do. I feel better already. I feel relaxed. Slow down. Walk. Jubal. Walk. Don't run. How many times do we say that? Walk. Don't run. Slow down. Walk. Practice making yourself wait. I don't need that candy bar right now. My little grandson says, I really, 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 really need candy right now, right now, right now. But you don't. So we have to teach him to wait. You have to wait till after dinner before you eat your candy. You have to wait till you get your homework done before you can go outside. So we have to practice waiting. And then the last thing we're going to talk, practice thinking before you speak. Uh-oh, uh-oh. If you guys are like me, it's a round trip. I think it in my head and it comes right out my mouth. And we're all pretty much that way. So we need to think about something before we speak. When we get ready to say something, take a breath, count to five, and then if it's important and it's not going to hurt somebody, then say it. That would eliminate a lot of talking, wouldn't it, if we did that? Let's talk about long-suffering now. What is long-suffering? That's a Bible word. When I think of long-suffering, I think of long, long-suffering. Long-suffering is to endure something unpleasant for a long period of time and remain patient throughout the whole thing. Let me give you an example. I knew a lady, a friend of mine. She was a pastor's wife, and she had liver cancer. She had liver cancer for 10 years, and she was in pain. She had lots of problems, lots of sickness, but every time you saw Miss Sarah, she was smiling, saying, hey, how are you? How's it going with you? She handled it really, really well. Now, she died a couple of years ago, but during all that time, Miss Sarah remained happy. Miss Sarah was long-suffering with her illness. God is patient and long-suffering. If you got your Bibles, I want you to look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Who loves rubber bands? I do. But I hate getting popped. Ouch, that kind of hurt. 
it can really sting if you pull it back real far, can it? Has that ever happened to you? Probably. Did you know that God is patiently working on each of us? He wants all of us to be saved. Did you know this rubber band is like God's patience? We do the wrong things and we do them over and over and over again. But God doesn't snap. God forgives us. And we can stretch it way out. This is a great big rubber band. And we could say that this one's like God because it's long-suffering. That means that he has more patience than anyone else. Aren't you glad? If I was God, I wouldn't be so patient, would you? I'm so glad that God is patient with me. God wants to give us peace. During this COVID-19 virus, you probably heard your parents say, I'm so stressed out. Sometimes we worry about what's gonna happen or we worry about what has already happened. And like this rubber band, we get stressed and we pull and we pull and then we snap and we snap. But I want you all to know that today I read in our quiet time with, how I hope you all did your quiet time this morning, that living on earth is the worst thing that can happen to us. Living here is the worst that it's ever going to be because guess what? When we die, we're going to be in heaven and it's going to be a beautiful place. So when things look so bad, you, can't, you can just think, this is as bad as it's ever going to be because when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to be with Jesus. I'm going to be with streets of gold. So I want you to be brave during this time and practice patience. Okay, now it's fun time. Let's shoot some rubber bands. But wait, wait, I gotta get ready first. From wherever you've been Come broken hearted Let rescue begin Come find your mercy O oh sinner come near Earth has no sorrow That heaven can't heal So lay down your
heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Boys and girls, good morning and welcome to Children's Church. Hey, it's Mother's Day. 
And I would like to share uh, a message with you guys today about the children of God. All right, now I know that you are a child of your mom and dad, okay? Um, you have mom and you have dad, but when you put your faith in the Lord, when you trust the Lord as your Savior, as you trust Jesus as your Savior, the Bible tells us that we are born again or born of, born of God. And I really, really enjoy uh, the first epistle of John. That's near the back of the Bible, okay? You know, you have the Gospel of John, which is like in the beginning, like in the early portion of the New Testament. And then you have the epistles of John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. Remember that when you do your Bible memorization, okay? And so in, 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 in the first epistle of John, John 1, all right, you have this phrase that you hear quite often. It's called, my little children. Now, I know, I, know, I know that you are not all my little children, but when, when we put our faith in the Lord, we become a child of God's. And then when you have those people who are your leaders, they kind of like watch over them, okay? So that's why John was speaking of my little children. It was not necessarily little children that he was speaking to or speaking of, but they are children of God. So first off, boys and girls, I want you to, I want you to examine your life and think about this. Are you a child of God's? Now, I know you're a child of your mom and dad, and by the way, it is Mother's Day, so be very, very, uh, just be exceptionally nice to your mom today and your dad, and well, I think it's just always important to be obedient. Anyway, so in this, in this passage, though, in, 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 in 1 John, you'll see the phrase quite often, my little children, and I want to walk us through the my little children of 1 John. Chapter number 2, verse number 1, it reads this. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. We have the word of God because it helps us live a life and guides us in our life to not sin. Sin is this, doing something that's wrong. And I know, boys and girls, even myself, at times we do things wrong, and I think it's important to do the right thing, well, because it's the right thing to do. And so we have the Word of God, and John is saying, hey, my little children, all right, boys and girls, these things write I unto you that you sin not, that you do not sin. And if any man sin, we have an advocate. Now, an advocate is someone who intercedes for us, or you could say it this way, stands up for us, or takes our place. All right? Or someone who represents us. Let me kind of paraphrase it this way, boys and girls. The Word of God was written for us that we would not sin. But in the cases when we do sin, we have someone who stands up for us. He actually took our place. And His name is Jesus Christ. So, boys and girls, I know we all struggle one time or another. But when you do sin or when you do something wrong, it's important that you ask God to forgive you. Don't turn around and go do it again, though. Learn from your mistakes. That way, we can, we, can, um, we can bring glory to the one who created us and who loves us, and that's God. Number one, my little children, these things have I written unto you that you would sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate, a representative for us, and his name is Jesus Christ. Now, if we go over to verse number 13, I'm sorry, verse number 12 of chapter 2, it reads this. I write unto you, this is John again, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. Remember, he doesn't want us to sin, but if we do, we know that they are forgiven because Jesus gave his life for our sins so that we would be pleasing unto the Father. And then it brings over to verse number 28 of chapter 2, and it reads this, And now, little children, abide in him. Now, the word abide means this. It means to, um, to stay with, or to live with, or to be connected to, or to be with. So Jesus wants us to be with him, and he wants to be with us. You could say it this way, boys and girls. I know this, Jesus came here to be with you and also so that you could be with him. And here's the words here from John. And now, little children, or boys and girls, or creation of the world, abide in him. That 
when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Meaning this, boys and girls, have you ever gotten in trouble? Well, we have, haven't we? And maybe your mom has said, you wait till your dad gets home. And you're like, oh no, no, no. And then dad comes home and your mom has a little conversation with dad. And dad walks over to you and you're feeling kind of, oh, or like maybe kind of sorry. But, you see, when it comes to meeting our Heavenly Father, you see our sins, all the things that we've done wrong, Jesus has taken care of them so that we're not ashamed to, to meet Him. Boys and girls, it's like this. It's Jesus took our place. He took all of our shame and He took all of our sin. So that when we meet God the Father in heaven, we don't have to be ashamed. And now, little children, abide in him. Stay with Jesus. Live with Jesus. Embrace Jesus. Trust Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Oh, put your faith in Jesus. That when he shall appear, we may have confidence. Hey, we're okay. Why? Because I'm with Jesus. Right? And we're not ashamed. Little children, sin not. And if you do, we know that we have forgiveness in Jesus Christ. And so that should inspire us and encourage us to stay with Jesus Christ, abide with him, live with him, stick with him, trust him, have faith in him. Chapter 3, verse number 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. Otherwise, don't get tricked and don't be fooled, right? Right? I mean, out there, people tell you there's this religion and there's that religion and there's this religion and there's that religion. And yes, there are many religions out there. But the beauty about Christianity is it's, it's a religion that's based on a relationship. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and there's no other religion that can compare to it. That's why he's saying, don't let anyone fool you. Don't let anyone trick you. There's no faith, there's no religion out there that even compares to a faith in Jesus Christ, right? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except by him. Boys and girls, listen. There's only one way to heaven, and there's only one way to the Father, and that's through Jesus. Will you trust Jesus today? Cry out to him. Say, Jesus, I want you to be in my life, and I want to be a part of your family. A child of God's. My little children, let no man deceive you. Don't let anybody trick you, okay? Be really careful, but also uh, be really, um, I, I suppose I want to say, uh, conscious, otherwise aware of what you're doing and who you're believing in and where your faith. Faith is this. Faith is trusting. Who are you trusting in? Little children, let no man deceive you. Don't let anyone trick you. All right? And then later in John chapter, 1 John chapter 3, in verse 18, it reads this. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Meaning this, my little children, let us not love in word. Otherwise, it's not just, hey, look, I love you, but you won't show it. It's not just words. It's, you've heard it said this way, maybe, all right? Our actions speak louder than our words, okay? Now, boys and girls, it's important Yes, you tell your mommy and your daddy that you love them, especially on Mother's Day. You say, Mom, I love you, Mom. But more importantly, it's not just our words, but it's our actions and our attitudes, okay? My little children, let us not love in word, not just in our word, all right? But may we love in our deeds, in what we, the things that we do, and may we love in, in truth. When you're honest with your parents, your parents truly believe that you love them. Now, boys and girls, I think we need to work on these things. I think we need to be honest. I think we need to be truthful. I, th I think we need to be careful not to let other people trick us. And I, most importantly, I think we need, to, um, we need to live in a way to make others happy with how we are. Being good, um, 
But that's not what we base our faith on. We base our faith on Jesus Christ, and he's the one that makes us good. In fact, he makes us great. Verse number four of chapter four. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Boys and girls, there's no greater faith than a faith in Jesus Christ. And when you are believing in him, it doesn't matter what you face, God, God is, when we're in him and he is in us, God is there for us, he defends us, he fights for us, he is my hero. And because he's my hero, I know that we can overcome anything as long as we're doing it together. My little children, you have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And then as you come over to chapter number five, boys and girls, we're just going to sum, we're going to close it out with this. Little children, keep yourselves from idols, meaning this. Boys and girls, be careful. It's okay for you to have things, and it's okay for you to do things, but when things become more important to you than God does, okay, then you may love that more than you love Him, and that may not be pleasing to Him. It's the same thing with your mom and dad, okay? Love your mom and dad, but, but love the Lord more. And as you're obedient to the Lord, I know that you'll be obedient to your mom and dad and you'll be pleasing to them. My little children, keep yourselves from those things that want to take you away, all right, from, from what's right. Flee, run away from what is wrong and always follow after what is right and do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Love your mom and dad, love the Lord, love your brothers and sisters, boys and girls, love but not only in word, but in your actions and in your attitude, in your conduct and in your conversation. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day and uh, have a, a great Sunday. As the deer pants for the to so my soul longs after you you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you you alone are my strength my shield to you alone will my spirit
boys and girls. God bless.